Hey, good morning. Just wanted to do a quick video on some of the new features with the bird feeder. We'll compare it to the old model and then we'll go ahead and get it set up and show it to you uh, in action. Before we jump in, I think it's a good idea real quick just to mention that while Revision 2 does have a lot of upgrades and features over the original version, it's definitely a bit more of a hobbyist model in the terms that it's a bit more involved in uh, main, making it. Um, there's the circuit board, there's a little bit more soldering, crimping. Um, it's a cleaner product, I believe. I think, like I said, there's definitely some features and benefits to this, um, but I think it's important to realize that if this just seems over the top or something you're not interested in or capable of, the original model is still a fantastic option. So keep that in mind. Um, don't write this off or think that if you can't do this, this one's not worth it. This is, they're both still good options. This is just um, kind of a step above. So right off the bat, you'll see one of the main differences is that uh, we're using a stepper motor instead of a small DC motor. The main intent there was that this is something that'll probably be easier to consistently source. I get a lot of emails or messages asking, you know, hey, I can't find this exact motor, but I can find this. Will this work? Or uh, can you change the mounting pattern to this? Or, you know, what about this and this and this? And this is just NEMA 17. Uh, the bolt pattern, the general layout is going to be the same across all of them, no matter what you get. Um, you might have some differences in terms of the wiring or the amperage rating or something small like that, but uh, we'll cover that later and those are differences that we can easily accommodate. Um, the second big thing is that it's got the onboard circuit board. So um, now we just have one barrel jack right here in the side. That'll give it 12 volt power and then on board we step that down to 5 volts for the Nano and the, TT, um, the TMC2209 driver. Um, and that'll drive the optical uh, feeder stop switch as well as the motor. The other big difference that I think is probably one of the best and uh, we'll probably actually incorporate this into the older design is the new mount. Um, and so this is a bit of a the way you're looking at it right here is how it'll actually sit on the case feeder, um, but it's a much more ergonomic, I don't know if that's the right term, ergonomic, I don't know, it fits better, it's more contoured, um, it's an organic shape, so it took a while and it's still not spot on perfect, but it's pretty close. Um, I think if you look at the original version, we kind of had this little arm and I mean, I could easily, there you go, that's, that's what was holding that up the entire time. Um, now we have something that is much more strong. Um, printed with a lot more walls. Remember, perimeters are where you get your strength, not infill. Uh, but so far, this thing has just been rock solid. It does have some additional hardware you have to use right there um, versus supporting it from underneath. But again, uh, so far, it's been just a, a far superior mount. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is that when it sits like this, uh, simple shaved off the top. So instead of having this one where it's kind of the, the full circle all the way up, um, this is just, it makes it a little easier to reach in and out to see what's going on if you've got a mirror on top and it obviously just, it cuts down in your print time and your material. Uh, another big difference is the uh, nose guide is now a two-piece design to help make it easier to print and you can easily change out the top shoe if you need. Um, and it's also just a spring-loaded quick adjust. So it's easier just to uh, be able to throw a hex wrench on there and adjust it rather than having to use something like this old model that had you know, two plates with the washer, the nut, you're trying to loosen it, tighten it, it's just kind of a meh, bad design. Uh, next, I never used the little the kicker, if you will, on the previous model. Um, but some people apparently wanted to reincorporate it or liked it. Um, and so this one is just a small piece. It's a, uh, what's that stupid word people always use, like parametric or, par I don't know, something, I don't know if that's even what this is. Um, but it's, it's just a print and place spring. So there's no, no hardware, no springs needed. Um, and there's a couple different sizes. I did a small one and a big one but it slides right on top there. And then if you want, it will uh, 
I think it just kind of helps kick out a bullet if it's kind of lopsided sitting on top. You'll see this bigger one. Yeah, I don't know. Again, optional. If you don't want it, you just leave it like that. Life goes on fine. But it's there if you want it. I think the last uh, upgrade or big feature change was that it is now an optical feeder stop switch um, versus the older one that had the, um, I'm thinking like limit switch. I'm sure there's a term for it. The micro switch with a little lever. Um, this one, actually, I really didn't have hardly any issues with. I think I had one time where it was stacking up bolts all the way through the spring, um, just on a happen chance. It's really been a good design and it's worked, uh, but it, it was finicky getting it set up. I remember that it took a lot of small adjusting and bending of that tab and trying to get everything just right. Where uh, this version, it's pretty straightforward. You put the sensors in from both sides. It's a press fit, so there's no through hardware. And uh, as soon as it stacks up and right in the center, the, you know, the, the, the tips or the noses will always be touching and it just breaks the, breaks the beam. Um, and there's also now a little window in there so you can see them as they're stacked up. And if something happens, if it doesn't work or if you think there might be a problem, you can easily just see it rather than this design where you'd have to kind of like poke in through the back or pull it off and, and look that way. So, um, this model, we're not going to do a build video. Um, I just, it takes a lot of time and I'm not that good with the whole video editing thing. And um, I know personally, I've turned away from build videos and I like having a manual. Um, so we're going to put together a hopefully moderately in-depth manual that'll walk you through, um, you know, a lot of the PCB parts. Um, it's not going to be a guide for how to solder, how to crimp. That's all stuff you'll need to know. But it'll it'll show where things go, how to connect them. Um, again, it's it's probably more intimidating you think if you're open to this kind of stuff. I think it's a great uh, learning project. I know I learned a lot from it, not only on the the PCB design um, and soldering and, and stuff like that, but it's a uh, yeah, it's a good fun project that again not only got some extra features from, uh, but learned a couple learned a couple new skills as far as price goes a project like this is probably more catered towards you know your your 3d printer your hobbyist um, type if you will um, you, you'll probably have a lot of this laying around I know like stuff like resistors and LEDs uh, maybe some stepper motors again that's I had some of these laying around from another printer and that's kind of what sparked the hey i bet a lot of people have something like this laying around and if not it's easy to source um i did end up buying a couple more of these i got five of the stepper motors for like 30 dollars shipped off ebay new um stepperonline.com that's apparently the brand um and that was the single most expensive part and so that comes down to like what uh six bucks a piece um everything else i ordered mostly off aliexpress and the only like disadvantage to that is most of the parts you have to buy in bulk. So, you know, this uses three LEDs. Well, you're gonna have to buy a hundred of each color. Um, and it might only be $4 for a hundred of them, but it's still that, you know, that kind of adds up. So um, everything that I bought to do this on bulk. Um, and again, I, I bought a lot of components cause I knew this is like the sixth revision of this. Um, I think we're on the fourth PCB and then there's been a couple of other changes. Um, but like the capacitors, you know, I bought a hundred of each. I, I think you could probably buy smaller quantities. I haven't gone back and really looked. So, uh, in the manual, there's a full bill of material. Um, you could probably try and, and get those numbers down. But again, a lot of that stuff's just good to have on hands. If you're, if you're interested in a product or a project like this, and you think this might be something up your alley, uh, having those extra components on hand probably isn't the worst idea and uh, hopefully they'll, they'll help you out with another project down the road. Um, but anyways, I did, I kind of tabulated what I spent and broke it down. Um, again, it's buying in bulk, but the, comp the hardware components, uh, you know, the brake beam sensor, 
the uh, the wall outlet, the power supply, if you will, the stepper motor, PCB, all the components uh, came out to just over $26. Uh, you figure a couple bucks in plastic. And then just like the original version, um, the spring and the bullet, uh, the powder funnel die is still purchased from Double Alpha. Uh, haven't found a good workaround. I did order some like brake line protector stuff offline that I thought would be a good fix and uh, it, it, or a good replacement um, and it wasn't. I just haven't been able to find the right size. It's either uh, like super stretched out and bolts will fall out in between it or it's a really tight diameter and they, they get caught in either way. Um, so I'm still recommending or you need to find your own but uh, the spring and the powder powder funnel that flares the case those need to be purchased so uh, yeah no i mean overall super happy with it uh hopefully hopefully it uh winds up in the hands of as many people as as that thing has so yeah let's uh let's get it thrown up onto the press and we'll see it in action real quick all right so we've got some bullets loaded up in here We'll go ahead and get it going. You have the potentiometer, that little knob on the back here, all the way slow will come to a stop and then progressively it does get faster. So we'll just go ahead and get that bumped up to a decent speed here. Working pretty good. So then it, it stopped just because the uh, feeder stop switch down here is full. So I'll empty a couple rounds out real quick and you'll see. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and pull a couple of bolts out of here and you'll see that just like the mechanical switch, it'll just go ahead and shut itself off as soon as it gets full. Uh, but you can just look in there and see um, what's going on if you need. And then you'll see here on the back side that we do have the three LEDs. So the green one I used for five volt power, the red is 12 volt power, and then that status LED, um, that's either used for the stall guard or the jam detection, which is still kind of a beta thing that we don't have enabled by default. Um, or it'll just flash if you have uh, if the uh, feeder stop switch is full. So if, again, if I, if I pull a couple of bolts out right here, you'll see that that stops flashing. And then once it's full, it does flash again. So just kind of a, a little status indicator to let you know um, what's going on from a logic standpoint. If either something's not working, uh, if it wasn't feeding bolts, but the status light was solid, you would know that something was up. If your 12 volt power light was out, maybe one of the components is bad or wasn't hooked up right. Same thing with the five volt. So it's just a, um, a couple, couple lights to help uh, let you know what's going on. All right, well, thanks for checking it out. Uh, links in the description for GitHub printables and the website where you can go and find all the files and manuals you need to get this thing put together and working. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know. Otherwise, see you next time.